Hey guys, this is Landros, and um, I am actually doing something I've been saying I was going to do it for a long time, and I've been thinking about it, and a lot of people have asked. Um, I'm actually updating this how to install mods videos. Now, if you guys watched the previous one that I did, first of all, thank you for watching it, but you should have told me um, that the sound quality was that bad. I had no idea it was that horrible. Um, I just listened to it back just a second ago, uh, as far as I could get. I couldn't get through it because it was just too too rough. And um, so apparently the old program I was using wasn't that great. So anyway, um, I'm just going to kind of go walk you through it. And before I do this, I'm going to actually just pull something up real quick. I want to make sure that I am recording. Yeah, you can see all my mess. This is how I do my LPs. I'll do a thing up, um, about that. All right, yeah, we're recording. Okay, so as long as I got that, I know we're recording. Okay, guys, so let's just start with what we need to do. Um, again, just like before, you need to actually have a few things before you actually put mods into your game. Obviously, shut your game down, so you don't want to have it up and running. But the first thing you're going to want to do is just pull up. If you don't already have a way to extract these RAR files, this is just one program. There's a thousand of them out there. Not really, but there's a lot of different free extraction programs. Um, you don't have to really do anything with it. You just download it, and then anytime you need to extract something, it automatically does what it has to do in the background. You know, you just download it, forget about it. Don't even mess with it. This one I recommend because it's still free and it works fine for me. I haven't had any issues whatsoever. Um, there's other ones and I think there is. I had a couple other ones on different computers, but you go right out here to this site and I'll, of course I'll put the links in the description so you can guys can just click on it, follow along with what I'm doing. You go right here, you just go ahead and download it and as soon as you do, once it comes through, you actually go ahead and open it. Let's see. I think I need to actually get rid of all that stuff. Let me go ahead and just clear out my download file folder. Anyway, you just go ahead and you download and extract it. No big deal. You'll be done. Again, simple, free, doesn't take anything at all. The next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go over here to this site right here, and I'll link this as well. And you're looking for the um, the resource file. So, And this has got a nice little walking you through it tutorial. It's very simple. Now, if you're going to do it, I'm going to bring your attention right here. Um, if you're going to go ahead and install mods, make sure you're updated to whatever the patch level is of the mods you're installing. Now, that may sound kind of weird. Um, I'll show you when we get to the mod screen. Uh, you need to look and make sure that whatever patch level you're at, the mods are updated to that same patch level. Otherwise, they're not going to work, and you're going to get some serious issues with your game. So this is very important. <laughs> That's why it's in red. All right, let's go ahead and go right on down. Um, your game is patched. You're all set to go. So it's this is obviously a much older thing. It doesn't really matter for the framework. You don't really need any, uh, to mess with that. All right, so you just kind of click through here. You're Obviously, you can read through this at your own pace, whenever you want to. But you are looking for the framework setup, which is right here. So and it tells you right here, just click this. You download it. And the first thing that's going to happen, I'm going to go ahead and download it just to show you. Uh, the framework is going in there. You see i got a little one there by mine just because I already have a copy of this in my, um, in my inbox. I'm going to go ahead and show it, inbox, my <laughs> download folder. And here it is right here. So, uh, again, I don't really need it, but I'm going to leave it there anyway just for now. I'll go back and I'll delete it later. Um, anyway, it's there, so you've got it. And all you have to do is just go ahead and double-click it. This is where having that, um, that zip program, that extraction program is going to help. And you're going to see that you have a folder now called mods. And it's really simple. You double click it again, and you can see what's inside of it. This is the resource file. You have to have it. If you don't have it, your mods are not going to work. Don't touch it. Don't mess with it. Leave it right where it is. The overrides is something that they've put in there. Um, I, you can delete this if you really want to, because it's not going to make any difference. It's not going to affect your game. Uh, you don't really need it. However, it's not hurting anything, you can just leave it. The packages is where you're going to put your mods. So you're going to go ahead and double click that again. Now this, they've got a couple of testing packages so that you can see that the mods are working. And what this will do is whenever you go into build by mode, this will take away those little sparkles and everything so that it just it builds without that animation. And it'll also um, stop you from having to watch the intro every time you start up the game. So it'll just skip right into the loading screen. And so if you actually put the mods in and you do it correctly, you can test your mods really, really quickly just by, by doing that. Okay, so here we've got our framework set up. I'm going to go back over here. And as you can see, here's my whole thing. Yeah, that's my name. Okay, <laughs> all right. So anyway, um, 
we got our mods you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna right click on this you're gonna copy it or you can cut it doesn't matter you're gonna copy it and then you're gonna take it over to your downloads uh, not your downloads uh, probably in your documents mine's in my documents file for some reason and you go find electronic arts and look for the sims 3 once you've done this you're gonna look down here and you see I've already got mine in here but I just click out here in the white space and once I do I can click it I can paste it now if I do that it's gonna go ahead and install over top of my mods folder and I don't really want to do that because I've got everything in there right now but I would normally hit paste and then my mods folder would show up you do not have to make this again once you copy and paste it's already done for you so you don't have to worry about anything alright so that's the basic framework of how to get the mod folder into your game and get it started at this point if you want to test your game and make sure you've done everything correctly just go ahead and start the game up and if you go straight from uh, the loading or from uh, the welcome screen the launcher and it goes right to the loading screen and you missed out on that whole little animation that video that opens it then you know you're good and you know your mods are in and they are working or at least the folder is okay so now that you got this in you're ready to start pulling some mods and putting things in and of course this also means custom content if you found something you want to use you will do it pretty much the same way so I'm going to go ahead and minimize this because we're going to come back to it in just a minute. Okay, the next thing you want to do is find where you're going to go to grab your mods. Now, NRAS is one that I've been using um, pretty much exclusively, so I'm going to go ahead and blow this up so you guys can see it. This is actually the NRAS site, and you can see it. It's very simple. It's very easy. Um, some of the instructions are a little bit... I don't, want to know, I don't, don't really know what the word is I want to use. Um, I don't know. They're just not in a language that I would normally expect but um it's okay you can kind of figure it out once you actually navigate to the site all right they've got a whole bunch of information I strongly recommend every time you come in here you always go look at news of the day and just to double check and see if anything's been going on um, obviously nothing's been going on right now uh, this is the most recent stuff and of course also look at your update history testing I look at this just to see what they're working on and this will kind of give you an idea of who's working on what and at what time they were doing it. So like right here, I know that Error Trap is being tested. Um, if I've had issues with it in the past, I might pull Error Trap out and not use it until I know that they've actually released a new version of it. Or at least maybe they're looking at it because there's something that they think is wrong with it. I don't know. Or it could just be a little twerk, a uh, little kind of a uh, twerking or whatever it is. What's the word I'm looking for? Tweaking. <laughs> <laughs> twerking. All right, they're just kind of tweaking the mod itself, so it's no big deal. Um, but I just kind of look over here just to make sure that everything's up to date, and if there's any news, they're going to actually put it here. Now, even though he is not updating this uh, mod anymore, there's a lot of people that are, and you'll see the, a lot of these names, Chain Reactions, one I see a lot. So they are actually working on making sure they're maintained, so <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Okay, now that we got through the hard part, let's get to the fun stuff. You want to pick some mods, and you're like, ah, which mods should I get? What ones work and what ones should I not use? It, with this site, they're all pretty much designed to go basically together. So you can pull as many or as few as you want. Um, this is where the mods are, and they're on every screen. So no matter if I go back to where we were before, um, if I go back again, no matter what, they're all going to be right here on this panel. So you can kind of go directly to it. Um, each one will have something different that it does. And it's entirely up to you as to whether it's valuable to you or not. Um, one that I actually have not used, but I thought about it, is this debug enabler because it can uh, apparently it can go through and help you get rid of some of the things in those inventories that get stuck, like the Omni Plant gift, and um, also it can help you set the level for their visa in the different countries. So if you don't want to go through all the adventures, but you want to get the level three visa right away, this mod could help you do that. So debug enabler, it's a good one. I'm not using it right now so I'm gonna tell you what I'm using and then I'm gonna show you some other ones that I use as well okay so the the first one that I would go to that I would tell you you probably would not want to miss it's a must-have to me is master controller this is like the ultimate mod so you want to go ahead and click on master controller and as you can see you got all the information about it you can go through here and you can read all the interactions you can see exactly what it does and right now you're probably going this looks like stereo instructions it's okay don't worry about it everything you need for the most part um, it's all very simple once you get in the game I can I can tell you it's probably one of the easiest ones to use um, lots of good stuff that you can do here but anyway you've clicked on master controller it's brought you to this page this is where I was gonna tell you whatever patch level you are at 
the most recent patch level which came out in January 2014 was 1.67 and so right now if you have any of these mods between 1.66 and 1.67 then this is the section you need to be in you need to be loading here but if you did not mod your game uh, and you're still stuck at a, a previous patch then you want to go down here and look for wherever you are now if you don't know which your patch level is open up your launcher and if you look down at the very bottom I think it's on the very last screen where it says whether your game is up to date it should tell you your patch level so it does it on mine I'm, I'm pretty sure it's standard with everybody so anyway this will give you an idea of which ones you want okay the ones that I would get you have to have the base mod so you want to go ahead and you want to click the base mod and of course it'll give you all the information that you need but really you just want to fly all the way down here to the bottom and you want to go ahead and just download it now this is a zip file which means you're gonna need that extraction program in order to open it so that's why you have to have it so once you actually download it, once I click it, it'll go to my download folder. Again, I can go ahead and show it in the folder, and they should all still be in the same spot. I think I put them in here. Yep, right here. So anyway, so I've got it right here, and you can see there's my master controller, and it is ready. All you would have to do then, and I'll show you when we install it, um, is just double-click and go. But right now, I just go ahead and I just install all the mods from this page first to my download folder, and then I worry about installing them into the game later okay so we got master controller that is a given definitely get that one the next one is right underneath it it's called cheats you want to do the same thing go ahead scroll down to the bottom hit the download once you do it's going to show up in that same folder you're set to go uh, again I would say that these two are definite has the you have to have them or at least I feel like I do um, I can't imagine running the game without them so the rest of them you can kind of tell if you want more places for the tattoo here you go if you want to actually change some of those interactions in the game and uh, change it with custom versions you know, here you go if you want this I have never used this one right here so I'm I'm not sure if I want to try it yet or not but you know it goes with story progression so up to you again master controller master controller cheats those two I would put them on my checklist Okay, the next one that I'm going to tell you is definitely a must-have is Overwatch. Now, Overwatch is not going to give you any kind of functionality. It's not going to do anything as far as you have to do anything. It's going to do it all on its own. So the best thing you do is just go down here. Again, look for your patch level. If you're not at the latest patch, look down here and see where are you. Are you in any of these areas? Um, if it's anything below that, I guess you're just kind of out of luck. Anyway, you should be patched up to at least one of these levels. But of course, if you're fully patched to the latest one, click the base mod. It's the only one you got. It's the only one you need. So once you actually get that one in there, you're good. You won't have to do any setup for that one whatsoever. Okay, I would say that's another must-have. And then the next one, um, it's kind of up to you if you consider it a must-have or not. I do consider it because it does so, so much for your game, and it's the register mod. So go over here to register do the same thing look for your patch level make sure you got the right one click on it once you do go down here download it you should be good to go those are my four what I call my my basic mods that's the ones that every time I start the game and I'm gonna play with mods I know I'll play with at least those four everything else I kinda go you know back and forth sometimes I do sometimes I don't so let me go through the alternative ones that I would some would, I would recommend and some I wouldn't. Okay, the first one that came up on my list was Error Trap. Now, I have not so great luck with Error Trap. It would be great to use if you're trying to um, run reports to find out what's happening in your game. I find that it, f it fixes errors that it shouldn't fix sometimes, and I get a lot of issues with it. So, right now, I'm going to say, for me, I'm laying off of Error Trap. I'm saying no to put it in my game. Um, I think there's some testing that's still going on with it. That's why we saw it up in the the testing history. So right now, I don't use it. Um, I know a lot of people swear by it, but I've had a lot of issues. So I'm going to kind of say, yeah, if you want to, go for it. If not, it's not a, a deal breaker. So go ahead and, you know, you can mark it off your list if you want. But it is an alternative. It is one that um, <clears throat> it has had some good things. All right, the next one is Once Read. Now, once read is a kind of a weird mod. It will actually changes it. Um, they'll only use uh, books in their bookshelf that they have not read. 
So if um, if you get tired of them always going and pulling the same little book over and over and over, put this mod in and it's going to take care of that. Uh, it's pretty nice. It has the base mod, which of course you have to run if you want to do anything different, that's fine. Uh, the tablet, this is what they're talking about, it's the multi-tab. So if you want to have all the skills unlocked, so you can learn social networking, you can learn alchemy, you can learn diving, whatever you want to learn, you can listen to a multi-tab tabcast, you would need this mod right here, which is tablet. I used it for a while and it's very addictive because it's so easy to skill up things that normally would take a lot longer than uh, than normal. So I'm kind of leaving it out of my game right now just because I got to the point where I thought it was a crutch. I was using it too much. And so it makes the game super easy. So I would say, you know, if you're the kind of person that, you know, you just, you're tired of the tedious leveling up and you just want them to listen to something while you do other things go for it but if you're like me and you kinda like that challenge still and you know you like taking the time and building the skill it's up to you if you don't have the multi tab then obviously you don't want this one but the base mod would actually work pretty well as far as every time they go into the bookshelf they'll pick something new I'm not sure if they'll pick skill books but I know they'll pick new just regular reading books okay so the next one that that brings me to is um, story progression now story progression is a big mod and make sure your computer can actually manage the sims fairly well because this thing it's gonna call out a lot of resources on your computer it's gonna make it do a lot of things that it's not used to doing so strongly recommend you have a really good computer to work with um, doesn't have to be that great but I mean it just needs to be where you can play the game and not sit there constantly lagging um, like you're about to die okay anyway to do story progression obviously you're gonna need the base mod now the base mod gives you quite a bit it's a huge mod and it gives you a lot of functionality and of course clicking on it if you click on the first one you can look at all the different interactions that you want to do with it and it's got a ton it's got things that are just for the town things for immigration lots uh, the sims themselves everything imaginable it just keeps on going now you're gonna see a lot of these other little things over here um, that'll say things like you know career story progression that means you need another module another add-on to it if you want to use that part of the story progression mod you don't have to but you know like I said if you just use story progression this one on its own you're gonna get a lot out of it and it takes a lot to set it up not much but once you do it one time I'll show you how to save those settings and then you never have to do it again alright so story progression that would be your base one now this one has two different versions so um, this one right here is the last one that Twilin did so if you're playing on the old patch that's the last one that he did that he modified the newest ones that are being tweaked right now they're actually going right here so just kinda look at these make sure you're picking the one that is uh, the one you want and the one that's gonna match what you need so okay going back to story progression again to the main page did I click the back button? Probably didn't. Yeah, I did. Okay. All right. The next one I would take is the extra mod. Now, you may be wondering, well, what in the world is the extra mod going to do for me? Um, it's got the map tag system. It's got a whole bunch of other things that you don't realize that you use them until you get in there and use them. When you go into this base mod and you look at all the interactions, you'll see a lot of them call for the story progression extra. So I would strongly recommend if you're going to play with story progression, pull the one that says extra. Just pull both of them okay population I do like because it'll help you with taking care of um, population control so how your town set up what NPCs, NPCs are working and doing what I mean there's some good stuff in here I don't pull a lot of stuff out of it I don't go in and tweak it that much unless I have to so uh, but you can kinda see what it does right here um, is it a whole lot nah not really so if I had to leave it out I would say leave it out no big deal relationship I have never really used it I downloaded it I think but I didn't really use it so uh, it's kinda of up to you the rest of these if you're playing with um, certain things you know you can do all these different things as far as like taxes and um, inheritance and whatnot you just have to download that part of the mod now how it works I've never played around with it so I couldn't tell you okay so again of these two or of these all these mods these first two base mod and extra I would say are if you're gonna play story progression they're must-haves so you don't have to use story progression in your town but you can and uh, it does bring the town to life so gives you a lot of things you can do alright let's go on down to the next mod I wanna actually highlight and that would be the traveler mod 
Now, Traveler is great, uh, but you're going to need to have World Adventures or University. So if you don't have um, one of those expansion packs, don't even waste your time because this one will not work for you. So you got to have either World Adventures or University Life. If you don't have either one, forget this one. But what this will do is it'll allow you to go from whatever home world you're living in, let's say you're living in Sunset Valley, and you can travel over to any other world and use it like a vacation destination. So I can be in Sunset Valley doing my life, my job, you know, the whole thing, and then I can take the family over to Bridgeport for the weekend. And you go over, you come back, you can stay there for as long as you want. Well, you can eventually move over there permanently if you want. It also allows things such as weather in the different countries. So if you want to see what China looks like in the snow, Traveler Mod will do it for you. You can also turn the weather off in any of those different countries. You can turn the weather off in any of those worlds, just like you can turn the weather off now in, in the game. But um, you can decide whether or not um, whether or not the countries are going to have the weather. You can also determine whether or not the people in that town will age up while you're away. So if I go to Starlight Shores and then come back to my hometown and then don't come back for another three weeks, well, three weeks have passed in Starlight Shores too, and so the game will automatically age all those people up. But I can set this to where that doesn't happen, and I can go back and see those people exactly as we left off. So, you know, you, there's a lot of things you can do with it. It's a very powerful mod. Um, but it also is one that you got to be careful because if you go to all these different um, towns over and over, if you get a really big, uh, you have a whole bunch of towns you visited, your file is going to get very, very big. And you'll see that the game will take a lot longer to save. And so you might see that that has some issues. But also you will, you know, if you move and you go to another town, you won't lose the relationships with the town, uh, with the people that you originally had. So it's pretty cool. I like it. Um, I recommend using it, but I'm not using it at the moment, so I don't know. I might put it back in. I haven't decided. Okay, the next one, which is the mod that they're not supposed to mention on the Sims 3 forum, but we can mention it here, is the Woohooer mod. Now, the Woohooer mod does a whole lot of different things. Um, some things that are <laughs> a little questionable, which is why I guess you can't mention it. But um, I've used it because this is the one where you guys have noticed, and some of you have actually made the comment, where it'll say, you know, ask their gender preference or ask about their age so they can tell you directly how old they are. This is the mod that does it. This is also the mod, believe it or not, that allows you to, I believe this is the one that allows you to have um, the opportunity to snorkel in Moonlight Falls. And this mod, believe it or not, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I am I distinctly remember reading something and reading it from this site this is the one that fixes the adventure board in um, World Adventures. So I play with it a lot just because you guys know me. I like to travel. I like to go over and see all the different countries and do all the adventures and I hate when the, the board breaks. So this mod really does help. Now you can still kind of jumpstart that with Master Controller and I can show you how to do that but I like having this mod so you don't ever have to mess with it. So those are the basic mods that I use. Now there's a few other ones that I will tell you about. Um, uh, let's see. Porter is one if you're going to move from town to town and you want to take more than one household. Uh, you can do this. I, mm, I wouldn't really mess with it because I just get too much. Too much happens. Um, no CD if you want to play without the CD and you're going from one computer to the next. You can put that mod in and you don't have to have a CD in your um, your CD drive which is pretty cool. I use shoeless every once in a while. This is one where they can go to a bathroom and they're not going to get shooed out of the room um, if somebody walks in. So it's up to you. I like it. I don't use it all the time. Saver's a really cool mod because it's one that sets it up where you can have the game automatically save for you after so many minutes have gone by. And it's really good for people like me that forget to save often and then have to actually start over and you know get very frustrated and say some choice words <laughs> it's okay now if you get going crazy and you want to have a big house and you guys if you've watched my hybrid baby challenge you'll see that it's happened at one point I had more than eight sims in the household but only eight sims can actually be shown on the side of your screen unless you get this mod called portrait panel and that will allow you to have I believe it's up to 24 which sounds insane to me but 
<laughs> I'm not going to question myself. I probably would do it. Anyway, Portrait Panel will allow you to show everybody you want, as many people as you want in the house. Master Controller is the one that's going to actually help you have more than eight. So once you've got Master Controller in there, you can set it up to allow yourself to have more than eight. Um, sleep Freedom allows them to sleep in any bed without actually getting kicked out or getting in trouble. Uh, let's see. Um, I don't really use it. I, I really don't. I don't really use any of these others, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm looking at it. Relativity is the one that kind of slows down time or it changes it so it doesn't take an hour for them to cook waffles. Um, I've never really played around with the mod to figure out exactly what the timing should be and how it should be set, but it's there. It's an option you can use. Uh, let's see. The rest of these, I'm just trying to look at it. Mm, nothing that I'm really just like saying, okay. Oh, wait, there is anti-magic scroll if you get tired of having to buy all the recipes and all the different things again and again and again because you know once they read it it disappears this is the one you click and it's gonna actually go ahead and take care of it so that when you actually read the recipe it'll still stay in your inventory and you can pass it on to somebody else so you only have to buy it one time yeah sometimes I think that's good sometimes I'm like you know what you know it's, it's so easy to make money in the Sims you might as well just spend the money and buy it Okay, um, home opener is just exactly what it says. You can walk right up to a house. You can open the house and see everything inside without having to actually know the people or do anything. So, you know, it's kind of good. Consigner will help you add different things to the consignment shop so you can sell other things. Um, I don't use it because I find pretty much everything I need to sell I can do either at the consignment store or I can do it at the Elixir consignment store. So I'm sure that there's better stuff here that I can do, but I just haven't really played around with it and written word adds the books that you write to the libraries or to all the um yeah to the libraries in town i have no idea about vector i have no about idea about this one but you can see i don't know what it is um traffic does something with the traffic in the game and i don't really mess with it i don't think there's really anything else here so like i said just to kind of recap the ones that i would say definite must haves master controller along with master controller cheats overwatch and register Register again, that's the one that gets rid of paparazzi and animals and stuff that you don't want in the town. So, <clears throat> I like it. Those are the core ones that I would say definitely get. The ones that you might want to either think about or you know, try them at your, own, at your own discretion. Error Trap, Once Read and Once Read Tablet, if you have the multi-tab. Story Progression, along with Story Progression Extra, and I use Story Progression Population. Um, Traveler, and Woohooer. Other than that, probably if I had to recommend any others, I would say Shoeless and um, Portrait Panel if I was going to actually have more than eight Sims in a house. So that's about it. So let's see. Now you got those. You've downloaded all of them. And I'm going to go ahead and just minimize this and show you. Here we are. We're back in my download folder. And these are all the ones that I have downloaded. I don't put all of them in at the same time. Uh, sometimes I do. But right now I'm not. I'm just using a handful of them. But here I have them, and I am ready to actually start installing them into the game because I'm excited, I want to play, I want to see how it all changes. So what you need to do is you just pick whichever one you want. We'll just start right here at the top. So Master Controller, you're going to double click on it, and it's going to open it up as a package file. And you're like, okay, great, what do I do with it? Well, you click on it, you're going to go ahead and you're going to copy it. Go back to wherever, and I've got my folder up again. Uh, let's just pull up an, another version of... Let's see. I don't want to mess any of these up because I've got too many things. All right, so I'm going to pull up another folder here. Go into your Sims 3 file. And, of course, that's where it's probably going to be under Documents. Mine's under Electronic Arts, the Sims 3. And then I'm going to go all the way down over here to Mods. Double-click on Mods. And this is a package file, so where is it going to go? It's going to go in the file that says Packages. So you click on it. If you go ahead and right click, you can paste it. Click over here in the white area so you're not installing it inside one of these. Just click over here, paste it, and it's going to show up. And of course, if I do it right now, it's already in there. So you'll see that it's going to actually say, oh, I'm done. So, and you'll do that for each and every one of these. So what I do is I just go back over here to downloads. I go down the list, pull up Master Controller Cheats, copy that one, bring it over, drop it come back over here do the same thing for each one that I want to actually use now you see I've got more versions of once read so they're different versions because they've been released with um, the different uh, patch levels so 
I would say make sure you always check your mods, make sure that they have been updated and that you're at the right patch or the right uh, the right usage of the number of the mod. Okay, so got all that going. Um, story progression, I don't have it in my game right now, but if I want to put it back in, very simple, go ahead, copy it. Once I copy it, bring it over here, paste it in, and I'm ready to go. Again, if I'm playing with story progression, I'm definitely going to play with story progression extra. So I will copy it, and I am going to go ahead and paste it, and go from there. All right, moving right on, go to the next one, which again, I told you I'm using population. Um, copy it, bring it over, paste it. Okay, uh, looking at the rest, Woohooer, like I said, I do like Woohooer, so I'm going to go ahead and pull it in because I like that interaction to ask them their age. I think that's really cool. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it. Uh, let's see, coming on over here. Traveler, it's entirely up to you if you want to use Traveler or not. I I go back and forth. Sometimes I'll say yes, sometimes I say no. It, it really is kind of up to you. Um, I'm trying to think where I would go. I really either want to go to university, into the future, or the countries. Probably not going to use it to go into the other places. But if I'm playing a game and I find that that's something that I might want, obviously I can come back and put it in there. But for right now, I'm going to leave it out because I don't really need to play with it at this time. You'll notice I have a few other things that are not actually um, the NRAS files. These are like, this is all hairstyles that I got from either from Mod The Sims or a couple of other sites that are out there. And basically you install them the exact same way. They're all going to be package files. When you download them, I don't know if it actually downloaded it like this, um, but you'll see that they'll they'll come in and they'll all look like this, like right here. Let's see, Isle of the Midnight Sun. I got to show you how to do that one. Um, it's not the same. So for those of you who want to actually play Isle of the Midnight Sun, it's a world. What you want to do? This is version three of it. This is the original version. Once you actually download it and you bring it in it's either going to show up like this which is a zip file or it's going to show up ready to go now if I double click this one right now it's going to open up my launcher and it's going to reinstall Island of the Midnight Sun again onto my computer and then I'll have two towns that say Isle of the Midnight Sun I don't want that if I want the third version I can go ahead and double click this and now I'm ready this is the new version which has diving lots and a port for a houseboat I can just go ahead I can double click on it I do not move this into the package file. You have to just double click and let the launcher install it for you. Once you get to the same point, it'll be just like the, your store content that you download. It'll come up, it'll download it into the launcher, and then you just have to click it and say install. That's all you do. Um, it's no big deal. But we're set up, we're ready to go with mods. We got everything we need in there. If you found other things you want from other sites, such as hairstyles or clothing or whatnot, if it's a package file, bring it in like this. If it turns out to be one of these custom content files, it'll say Sims 3 custom content, you just double click it and it's going to install for you. You don't have to do anything else. Okay? So that basically covers the installation, how you put mods in your game. And from this point, all you have to do is just start your game up. Once you do, you're going to see something. And I'm going to go ahead and start my game up in just a moment. So um, because it takes a while for my launcher sometimes to load, I'm going to cut out of here and I'm going to let the, the game come up in just a moment.